Hi, Chad Homick here today with First Medic Pump Company. Today we're going to do a rebuild with our E1 Metallic with a metal center. Here we have our wet end rebuild kit and our air end rebuild kit for our E1 metallic with a metal center pump. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man method and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. For somatic genuine replacement parts, wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals and more information, visit us on the web at www.versamatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rump video on safety at versamatic.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of the parts and components during the rebuild. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, o-ring pick, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 3 fourths inch, 5 30 seconds inch socket head allen wrench. Let's get started. For video purposes, we're going to use a 3 8 drive impact gun. First, we're going to remove the discharge manifold. Remove the discharge manifold and set aside for later reassembly. Remove the discharge check balls. And remove the discharge valve seats. Now we're going to remove the air valve assembly. We'll set the main air valve aside for later disassembly and rebuild. Discard the old gasket and valve insert and valve diverter. Now remove the suction manifold. Go ahead and set aside the suction manifold for later reassembly. Turn the pump upside down, remove the suction valve seats. Remove the check balls. Now remove one outer chamber. and set aside for later reassembly. Leave one water chamber on and we're ready to remove the opposite diaphragm assembly. Here we have the diaphragm assembly with the diaphragm rod set aside and remove the opposite outer chamber. 
Once the outer chamber is removed, set aside for later reassembly, and remove the second diaphragm assembly. Now remove the shaft retainer. Now remove the main shaft O-ring and discard. And remove the second shaft retainer plate and set both aside for later reassembly. Remove the second main shaft O-ring and discard. Now we're going to remove the bumper O-ring on the pilot valve spool and discard. We need to remove the bumper O-ring to remove the pilot spool. Press out and set aside. And now remove the pilot sleeve and set aside for later rebuild. Now go ahead and open our complete air and rebuild kit for installation. Now remove the pilot sleeve O-rings with an O-ring pick and discard all old O-rings. Now we're ready to install our pilot sleeve O-rings. Go ahead and work from the outside in. Once all O-rings are installed in the O-ring grooves and not blocking any porting, apply grease to the O-rings to ensure they're not catching binding are cutting while assembling components. And gently press in the pilot sleeve so we don't roll, nick, or damage any of the O-rings. Once fully installed, grease the main shaft O-ring retainer. Install the main shaft O-ring. Repeat this process for the opposite side for the other main shaft O-ring. Go ahead and remove the old O-rings from the pilot spool and discard. Once the old O-rings have been removed, inspect the pilot spool for any wear, scratching, and install the new O-rings. Leave one bumper O-ring off for installation purposes. Apply grease to the pilot spool O-rings to ensure they don't catch, bind, or cut while assembling into the pilot sleeve. Set aside and now install our main shaft retainer plate. You'll repeat this process on the opposite side. Once our retainer plates are installed, we're ready to insert our pilot spool. Slowly insert till we don't damage, or roll, or nick any O-rings. Notice that the bumper O-ring on the opposite side will need to be installed. Now we can install grease on the diaphragm rod to prevent the items from catching, binding, or cutting the main shaft O-ring. Position the diaphragm so it lines up with all the bolt holes. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine surfaces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratching, or material buildup can be cleaned up using emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. Once the bolt holes are aligned, begin to install our outer chamber bolts. Tighten bolts evenly in a crossing pattern and torque to the recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. Now we're ready to install our second diaphragm assembly. 
Install the outer plate where it notes fluid side. And also inspect your inner plate and ensure that you have the radius of the inner plate towards the diaphragm. Torque the diaphragm assembly. If you achieve torque with the bolt holes on the diaphragm assembly between holes, always go forward to the next hole, never back off. As you can see here, we're not completely lined up with our bolt holes, so we need to go forward to make sure we are lined up with all bolt holes within our center section. Once the bolt holes are aligned, we're now ready to install our outer chamber, inspect the machine surfaces, the radius of the outer chamber. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. When tightening the bolts on the outer chamber, tighten in a cross pattern and torque to factory specifications. Now we're ready to install our suction manifold. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring, damage, or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Install our suction side check balls. Inspect the valve seats for any wear. Replace as needed. Note the orientation. You want the o-ring groove to face towards the suction manifold. Install our valve seat o-ring. Make sure it's completely installed within the o-ring groove. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Align the bolt holes of the outer chambers to the suction manifold and torque the bolts in a cross pattern. Now we're ready to rebuild our air valve assembly. Go ahead and remove the end caps. Once the end cap is removed, discard the old end cap gasket. Repeat this process for the opposite side. Remove the main air valve spool. Inspect the integrity of the casting, machine surfaces. You'll want to replace as needed. Remove the U-cup seals on the main air valve spool and discard. Inspect the integrity of the main air valve spool. Make sure there's no wear, nicks, damage. Go ahead and install the U-cup seals for the air valve spool. Notice that the U-cup portion will face inward on the air valve spool. Make sure you fully install into the groove. Be sure to apply grease. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. Also be sure to apply grease to the main air valve body. When installing the air valve spool, be sure to compress the U-cup seals so they're not damaged when installing. Be sure that the main air valve spool moves freely within the air valve body. Now we're ready to install our end cap gasket. Ensure that you have the bolt holes lined up and the porting for the piloted air. and be sure to install the end cap properly.
Do this for the second side. Ensure that the end cap gasket and the end cap itself are aligned with all porting and bolt holes. And torque the end cap bolts to factory specifications. Now install our valve insert. Make sure the cup portion of the valve insert is facing towards our ceramic valve diverter. The valve insert can go only go one way. Note the notch in the air valve body and the valve insert. Now install our air valve gasket. It is marked with valve side. It goes towards the air valve body. Be sure to align the bolt holes on the air valve body with the center section of the pump. The air valve inlet will face away from the exhaust port on the center section of the pump. Be sure to torque the air valve bolts to factory specifications. Now we're ready to install and inspect our machine surfaces on our discharge manifold. Inspect the ball cage. Ensure there's no sharp edges. Clean up as needed. Now install our discharge valve seats. Inspect for any wear or nicks, scratches. Replace as needed. Note the orientation of our valve seats. The o-ring groove faces towards the discharge manifold. Install our valve seat o-rings and our discharge check balls. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Tighten bolts evenly in a crossing pattern and torque to the recommendations called out in the service and operating manual. This concludes our airside rebuild of our E1 metallic metal center pump. Today we put in o-rings, u-cup seals, gaskets, valve diverter, and valve insert. When doing a complete rebuild, see our wet side video. Or for more information, visit us on the web at versamatic.com or contact after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com. Thank you.